Watch those jets. Go! The management of the New York Jets welcomes you to the first football game at Shea Stadium. It's a delightful September evening and more than 52,000 fans throng to see the Jets open the 1964 AFL season against the Denver Broncos. Denver's ball, first quarter. The Broncos quarterback Jackie Lee fades back and then throws a long one. But Billy Baird steals it out of the air to intercept for the Jets. With a key block from rookie Burt Wilder. Baird stays on his feet to the Denver 26. Right from the start, it's go, Jets, go. Coach Weeb Eubanks sends in his offense, and three plays later, the Jets throw their first pass in Shea Stadium. Tall Dick Wood at quarterback. Dick's target is Gene Heater. He's got the ball on the six, and he drives his way into the corner for a first touchdown. History in Shea Stadium as the Jets go out in front, 7-3 at the first quarter. Second period now, the Bronx aim to throw again. Lee gets off a long one, but Marshall Starks intercepts it. Marshall runs it back 20 yards before he's hauled down. Later in the Oakland game, Starks, who starred as a collegian at Illinois, suffered a broken leg, and his loss was keenly felt by the Jets during the rest of the season. Here's a good close-up of the Jet offense. Woods' pass is good to Maynard, and Don races to the Denver 13 before he loses his helmet and his forward motion. Everything comes up roses for the Jets on this historic opening night in Shea Stadium. Even the Gremlins are working for them. Watch this pass. It's tipped by Willie Brown into Maynard's arms, and it's touchdown New York. Jets lead 23-6. The final minutes belong to the home team. Another lead pass is intercepted, this time by Ralph Baker. The rookie linebacker from Penn State takes it almost to the goal line to the Bronco 5. Now we zoom down on Bill Mathis, the veteran, 220 pounds. He comes crashing across the right side as he spurts between the goal post for another touchdown. It's the final score of a wonderful evening, and the Jets make their debut in Shea Stadium, a 30-6 triumph over the Denver Broncos. It's a beautiful day in Boston where the Jets go up to challenge the Patriots before a packed crowd in Boston College Stadium. Here are the Jets warming up. Wahoo McDaniel, New York's most popular linebacker. Coach Wee Bubank's defensive stars take the limelight first. Watch Jerry Philbin, Paul Rochester, Burt Wilder, Larry Grantham, and Daynard Paulson surround Ron Burton. They dump him for an eight-yard loss the first time Boston gets the ball. The Boston quarterback is Babe Perilli, number 15. Rookie Jerry Philbin nails him. Perilli fumbles, and the alert Larry Grantham recovers for the Jets on the Boston 47. First and 10 for New York. A great day for football. This pass comes right to the camera and into the hands of Maynard, who's bounced out of bounds on the Patriots' 32. On fourth down, Curly Johnson holds and rookie Jim Turner kicks. A 40-yard field goal puts New York out in front, three to nothing. Curly, one of the great pro football quarterbacks, an all-league selection can't be denied. 
Here he passes to Tony Romeo, and the Patriots get moving. Perilli, an 11-year veteran in the pro ranks, gets another one away. Starks tips it, and right into the hands of Jim Coldclaw. A tough break for the Jets. Boston takes the lead, 7-3. Really keeps up the pressure, but the Jets have an all-league defensive back who will make 12 interceptions during the season. One of them comes right now. Daynard Paulson, number 40, gathers in the Babe's pass. The Jets are on the move. Wood throws to Maynard for 21 yards before he's brought down. First and 10, New York. Wood completes one to Mark Smolinski, who's bounced out of bounds on the Boston 41. Wood keeps the drive going. He hits Bake Turner for 13 more yards and a first down on the Pats 26. Three plays later, it's goal to go, and Bill Mathis smashes over for the touchdown. The score is tied at 10 all. Third period, Jets ball. Johnson is back to punt. Curley's kick rolls toward the end zone where the referee rules it a muffed catch. The Jets do not gain possession and they lose a good chance to score. The argument and the ball game. Boston goes on to win it 26 to 10. Back in Shea Stadium, the Jets take on the AFL's defending champions, the San Diego Chargers. There's Keith Lincoln, the Chargers fullback. And speaking of running backs, here's New York's Mark Smolinski. Number 31, Bill Mathis. Number 41, Matt Snell, who's on his way to becoming the rookie of the year. There's a big crowd in Shea Stadium, and the fans see some outstanding defensive play by the Jets. Philbin, the rookie from the University of Buffalo, smears Tobin Rode for a 15-yard loss. Rode, however, is a cool veteran under fire. Here, he gets the ball to Lincoln, and the ex-Washington State star stays inside the sideline and on his feet for a 35-yard gain. He's one of the shiftiest runners in pro football. The Chargers have a full head of steam, and they aim to stay on top of the AFL's Western Division. Root connects with Dave Kosorek for a touchdown, and San Diego leads the Jets at halftime, 10-3. Then the Jets storm back. A screen pass to Snell is good for 19 yards. The Locust Valley Long Island native is tough to bring down. He never gives up, and is always trying for that extra yard. Second down, and the Jets strike fire. Dick Westmoreland deflects a pass into the fingers of Turner, and Bake fights across for the tying touchdown, 10 to 10. Coach Wee Bubank's offense matches the San Diego powerhouse point for point. Trailing in the final quarter, the Jets uncork a beauty. Wood gets excellent protection to Maynard, and Don goes high into the air, makes the catch, outraces Jim Warren, 58 yards for a New York touchdown, and the Jets earn a tie with the Chargers, 17 to 17. The Oakland Raiders invade Shea Stadium. There's Cotton Davidson, their famous quarterback from Baylor University and fullback Billy Cannon, the ex-LSU All-American. Here is Jim Turner, the Jets' high-scoring kicker. And defensive star Larry Grantham, number 60. He's as popular with Jet fans as the famous Jetmobile. Larry helps get the Jets off to a quick start tonight. He flies in to block a punt, and Gordy Holes, all 260 pounds of him, lumbers it down to the five-yard line. Matt Snell helped build Shea Stadium during his college vacations. Now he helps set records on its turf. 
Matt scores on this play, and the Jets lead the Raiders 7-0. Snell has the Jet fans roaring tonight as he carries 28 times for 168 yards. Here, with good blocking by Jim McCusker, he gallops 43 yards before Oakland can stop him. With goal to go for the Jets, Bill Mathis smashes over left guard, and New York leads 14-0. Second period, Oakland's ball. Tom Flores throws deep for Art Powell. But Paulson picks it off for the Jets. Plays like this earns Daynard all league honors. It's go, Jets, go. When Mark Smolinski slashes over right guard, the Jets lead 21 to nothing. Second half, Oakland's ball. And look at this defensive play by Gordy Holes and Larry Grantham. They really cream Cotton Davidson for a five-yard loss. Cotton has his hands full against that jet rush. This time, rookie Burt Wilder sinks him 10 yards back of the line of scrimmage. Davidson doesn't give up. But this time, Billy Baird has him figured out, almost before he throws the ball. Baird intercepts on his own 46 and dashes 54 yards. The Jets go on to beat Oakland, 35 to 13. The Jets versus the Houston Oilers. There's Dick Wood in a pregame warm-up. His opposing quarterback is George Blanda, another great star of the AFL. Jets ball, first quarter. Snell explodes over the right side for 17 yards and a first down on the Houston 31. Two plays later, the Wood-Maynard combination clicks for the Jets. Dick finds Don on a dead run, and the Jets lead 7-0. Watch the fine blocking on this play by Sherm Plunkett, Don Maynard, Dan Ficka, and Dee Mackey as Snell fights for five yards. Meanwhile, Weeb's getting the word from the top, and this time Wood threads a pass to Heater. Gene grabs it with one hand and gains seven more yards for New York. Notice how Mathis and Snell give Wood time to find his man. There he is. Maynard has fooled the defenders to make it a 17 to nothing game in favor of the Jets. Now it's Houston's ball. Blanda drops back to pass. An interception by Baird gives the Jets the ball on their own 43. Quick starting Matt Snell takes off and races 40 yards down the middle before he's tripped up on the Oiler 10-yard line. The rookie of the year, and the Jets have him. That's Matt Snell. Now here's a head-on view of Matt's driving power. He smashes to the Houston 2. Another close look as Wood goes over on a quarterback sneak. It's the Jets' ball game on their home grounds in Shea Stadium as they knock off Houston 24 to 21. It's the last of the season's night games in Shea Stadium, and Sherm Plunkett is ready. He's one of the biggest men in pro football at 295 pounds. That's Jim McCusker in the foreground. Winston Hill and Burt Wilder are behind him. Here's rookie quarterback Mike Tolliver. And two of the Jets' top receivers, Bake Turner, who caught a season's total of 58 passes, and Don Maynard, who grabbed 48 for the year. The Jets are ready for Boston. First quarter, Patriots ball. Babe Pirelli is set to pass. It's intercepted by, guess who? 
Wahoo. With Grantham, Washington, and Holes giving him support, McDaniel goes 38 yards to the score. Nice going, Wahoo. The Jets lead 7 to nothing. Second quarter, New York's ball. And here's a play that's spectacular when it works. Maynard on a reverse around left end. It's good for 14 yards and a first down on the Boston 47. In spite of the Boston Blitz, Wood is getting his shots away. This one's deep to Turner. And Bate goes the distance for the touchdown. 21 to nothing in favor of the Jets. Second half, Boston struggling to get back into the ball game. The Babe throws a long one, but Baird never takes his eyes off the ball. Another big interception by Billy on the New York 14-yard line. Now pure running power. On a trap straight ahead, Mathis charges 34 yards before he's bowled over on the Boston 43. Minutes later, the end zone's in view. Watch this leaping catch by Turner as the New Yorkers go on to beat the Boston Patriots 35 to 14. A big victory in Shea Stadium in the last night game of the year. November 8th comes big and bright, and so does the crowd to Shea Stadium. A record throng pours through the gates to see the Jets play the league-leading Buffalo Bills. 61,929, count them. They fill the new park from top to bottom. And they see some exciting football. Buffalo's Jack Kemp passes in the first quarter. Paulson intercepts it, and it's the Jets' ball on their own 24. First and 10 for the Jets. Wood swings left to send a screen pass to Snell, and Matt crashes head on into the Bills for a good game. Watch the Jets' offensive line hold back Buffalo. Wood can take his time. He serves it high and long to Turner, who grabs it at full speed, eludes George Sames, and scores for the Jets. It's 7 to nothing in favor of New York on a 71-yard pass play. Here's a ground-level shot of the action as Wood passes directly to you. But Bill Mathis hauls it in for a five-yard gain against the AFL leaders. Now comes a bomb. A 45-yard pass play in which Maynard beats Booker Edgerson on the Buffalo 30. This time, there's trouble for the Jets. Wood's pass is intercepted by George Bird, nine yards inside the end zone, and he brings it out to the 16 before Maynard, Sam DeLuca, and Mathis can haul him. And now Buffalo, the champions of the American Football League, and Daryl LaMonica passing. What a pass, and what a catch by Glenn Bass. It's an 80-yard strike for a touchdown as the Bills tie up the game at 7-all. With 43 seconds remaining, Cookie Gilchrist, Mr. Big of Buffalo, suddenly explodes. The Jets had contained him all day, but this 67-yard romp in the final minute ices the game for Buffalo, and they win it 20-7. Out on the cold, cold road, there's snow in Denver as Mike Tolliver hoists a 30-yard scoring pass to Turner. But neither the cold, the snow, nor the Broncos suit the visitors from New York. The Jets are forced to punt from behind their goal line, and look what happens. Odell Berry, one of the league's top punt returners, really does his stuff. And Denver goes on to beat the Jets 20-16. 
Next stop, Oakland, California. In spite of the sunshine, the ground is soggy underfoot when Billy Baird rushes in to hit Cotton Davidson's throwing arm. And Laverne Torzon intercepts the shortest pass on record and gallops 40 yards for a touchdown. The Raiders have a score to settle with the Jets, and before this game is over, Davidson passes them to a wild scoring 35 to 26 victory. Clem Daniels takes this one going all the way on a 60 yard touchdown play. In San Diego, the Jets are as far out on the road as they can be. It's a long way from Shea Stadium when they take on the Chargers. Here's Matt Snell running hard and fighting hard for every yard he can get. As we said before, a successful reverse always looks great, even when the enemy does it. When Lance Allworth, the all-league flanker back, pulls it off, he and his team are on their way to beating the Jets. Jefferson Stadium in Houston, Texas, where it's New York versus the Oilers. First quarter, Houston's ball. Sid Blanks takes off a round right in. This hard-running rookie doesn't stop legging it until he's covered 92 yards from scrimmage. A new record for the American Football League. Sid Blanks of Del Rio, Texas, just one year out of Texas A&I College. Second quarter, and the Oilers are back in front formation. Larry Grantham sails in to block the kick and recover it all by himself on the two-yard line. No wonder Larry's an all-league choice for the fourth straight year. New York's ball and another highlight. Mike Tolliver is in at quarterback. And this rookie from the University of Illinois sends a long arching toss to Turner. 66 yards for a Jet touchdown. Back in New York at Shea Stadium, the Jets take on the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a fine football day in late November, and nearly 50,000 fans, including 8,000 mid-Jets, have come to Flushing Meadows to see their green-clad heroes in action at home. First quarter, Kansas City's ball, and that jet line is roaring in on Lynn Dawson. Torzon hits him, and the pass is intercepted by Grantham. Larry battles to the Kansas City 43, where it's first down for New York. Soon the Jets' top scorer, Jim Turner, kicks a 36-yard field goal, one of 13 he makes on the season. Jim kicks for 72 points, all told. Again, watch that Jet defensive line. Paul Rochester, Torzon, and Bob Waters converge on Dawson, the league's leading passer. Once more, Dawson drops back to pass. It bounces off the hands of Abner Haynes, and Paulson intercepts. Mark Johnston flies down past him to make the key block that sends Daynard over for a touchdown. 13 to seven in favor of New York. Go Jets go, and just in front of our camera, Snell takes a swing pass left for a first down on the Kansas City 33 yard line. Moments later, the Jets cap this drive with a scoring bullseye. Through the air for 20 yards, Wood finds Turner in the end zone. 20 to seven in favor of the Jets, and nearly 50,000 fans are letting them know they like it. So the Jets come up with more of the same. Here's a swing pass right to Snell. Matt was one of the Jets' top pass receivers, catching 55 for the year. What better finale than to let New York's Rookie of the Year make one more touchdown as the Jets go on to win from Kansas City, 27 to 14. It's been a sparkling season for the fast-flying Jets, who in 1964 moved into their new playing home, beautiful Shea Stadium. But there's sure to be more and better football in this ballpark in 1965. Matt Snell and other top stars will be back in force, and so will some sensational newcomers. Watch number 12. That's Joe Namath, celebrated rookie quarterback of the New York Jets. Here, Joe demonstrates the passing wizardry that brought Alabama the national championship. Bama's Bear Bryant calls him the greatest he's ever coached. Experts rate Namath best pro quarterback prospect since the fabulous Sammy Ball. 
And for everyone who's cheered for old Notre Dame, the Jets have still another star quarterback coming up. John Hewitt of the Fighting Irish is headed for Shea Stadium, too. The Heisman Trophy winner in 1964, John led Notre Dame's big comeback of the year. Name it. Hewitt, Snell, Grantham, Paulson. The list of stars is growing. For sheer excitement, dramatic action, spectacular setting, follow the Jets at Shea Stadium in 1965. Your greatest Jets fan.